I'm Rabbi Jay Carson. And I'm Rabbi Need Ruby Ray Carson. And, and tape, tape with Rabbi, Rabbi Doug, Doug is, is next. next. We're gonna see Rabbi Doug. We're gonna see Rabbi Doug. We're gonna see Rabbi Doug on your TV tonight. But Daddy, I wanna watch Monday Night Football. Forget about Monday Night Football. There's no other thing we're gonna watch on Monday but Rabbi Doug. Yeah, Rabbi Doug on TV tonight. We're gonna see Rabbi Doug. Oh, everybody talk about Doug. Shalom and welcome to Tape with Rabbi Doug. We're here at the uh, North Shore Sheridan Hotel in Northbrook, Illinois. Where we're about to hear noted capitalist Rabbi Yitzhak Ginsburg, who will be speaking about the Bible and the power of love. Rabbi Ginsburg is uh, travels around the world speaking of Kabbalah and about the subject of Kabbalah and Hasidus, uh, the Hasidic movement and beliefs. Uh, so join us here today on tape with Rabbi Doug. This is Rabbi Daniil Moskowitz, director of Lubavitch Chabad of Illinois. This week, we read the Torah portion of Vahalovska, at least here in Kutzlars. And it continues where last, last week's parsha left off. That in last week's Torah reading, they talk about the consecration of the Mishkan, of the tabernacle, and each one of the Nisiyan, of the heads of the tribes, would bring a special offering on their set, set day in order to consecrate the first sanctuary for the Jewish people. <coughs> the traveling Mishkan, which traveled from place to place with them throughout the 40 years of wandering. This week's portion opens with the command to Aaron HaKohen, to Aaron who is the high priest, the Kohen Gadol, and he was told by Haloska Eshaneros that he was given a specific job. And that job was to light the menorah in the holy temple in the Mishkan. And our commentaries point out that Aaron was given a job that actually was even more important than that which the heads of the tribes had done earlier that his job was more important than the initial sacrifices that were given from the heads of the tribes. Because the menorah represents the soul of the person. And the soul is eternal. Even when we are living in a time that we don't have a holy temple, that we don't have a high priest, that we don't physically light the menorah, but the soul, the soul within every person is constantly challenged to connect to God. And this, in fact, is the mission statement of what the Chabad movement is all about, to give people the opportunity to have their soul connected and reconnected and rekindled with that special spark in order that they be able to have a relationship with God that is unique. My name is Rabbi Daniel Moskowitz and I am proud to be involved in bringing this program to you tonight. It is a great schuss, it is a great merit to have with us such a great person as Rabbi Yitzchak Ginsburg, a true teacher of Kabbalah, someone who is dedicated to Am Yisrael, the Jewish people, and Eretz Yisrael, the Holy Land. You will hear more about Rabbi Ginsburg in a moment. But I would just like to point out to you tonight 
that this program is just that by Los Fesaneros. It's hopefully going to help to kindle within you an even greater appreciation of what the Torah has to offer. But it can't just stop here. It's not just a program, a one-time program for tonight. Torah is chayenu ve'orech yameinu, it's our life and the length of our days. And just as we ate yesterday, we eat today and hopefully we'll eat tomorrow. And so it is with Torah as well. In your packets that you've received on your way in, you'll see many of the programs that we in Kabbalah and Northbrook have available for you. Thank God over a year ago, we opened our office here just down Dundee, past Landwehr. We're offering many classes, classes in Talmud, classes in Hasidis, classes in Kabbalah, classics, classes in basic Judaism. And if there's a class that is not on the list that you're interested in, don't hesitate, just call us, and we'll be happy to fill in the gaps wherever they might be. So it's an invitation to not take tonight's lecture as a single event, but rather to make this another link in the chain between the Jewish soul and God Almighty. I would like to thank all those that helped make this lecture possible, those that helped sponsor the lecture tonight, those that helped organize it. I would like to give a special thanks to Mr. Yitzchok Chikaris, to Mr. David Levitin, who helped organize this lecture as well, and for the Galena Institute, which we will hear about. This is the, these are the programs that Rabbi Ginsburg runs in Eretz Yisrael in Israel. We thank them for giving us the opportunity that Rabbi Ginsburg should come to Chicago. It's his first time that he's here, and we hope that it will not be his last. It's with great pleasure that I introduce to you now the executive director of Gal and I, someone who's worked very diligently on these programs, and it was actually a pleasure working with him over email and long distance. It was even a greater pleasure to meet him for the first time just a few hours ago. I'd like to introduce tonight the executive director of Gal and I, Shmuel Second. Welcome, everybody. We've been on a uh, whirlwind tour. I told Rabbi Ginsburg the other night that I feel like Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> you know, uh, we were in Los Angeles last night, and I know we're down the road, but we can still consider the Chicago area, right? And tomorrow night we're in Boca Raton, so as long as we get on the right plane and off at the right stop, we'll be okay. But uh, in any case, Baruch Hashem is a great to treat to be here, and uh, Rabbi Ginsburg will be speaking momentarily. Uh, just one very important announcement, and this comes from Israeli experience, and that is, if we can all be so kind as to shut off our cellular phones. See, this was a major problem. I don't know if you know, but there was a major um, convention of archaeologists that were meeting in Israel. They were searching and searching and searching. They were digging. And they wanted to find out how people communicated thousands of years ago at the time of Bar Kokhba, at the time of Rabbi Akiva, and the temple, how they communicated. They didn't find anything. And one clever archaeologist says, I found it. And they looked, and found nothing. This proves that for 3,000 years, Jews in Israel have been using cellular phones. <laughs> they know why. Any case, so therefore, uh, it's important to do that, and uh, this way, we uh, give the cover necessary to, to the Shia. Uh, in the packet, as uh, Rabbi Moskowitz uh, mentioned, is a little envelope uh, containing information about Galenai. Galenai, as a matter of fact, it's uh, a puzzle. It's a verse in the Torah that says, Galenai ba'vita diflot mitorita. Open my eyes. Galenai means open my eyes so I can see the wonders of your Torah. And Galenai is a host of various programs. We have yeshivot in Shechem, Yericho, and Hebron. And uh, we teach the, in addition to regular Torah subjects, we also teach the, uh, the great Torah of Rav Shimon Bar Yochai, the Kabbalah. And I always say that Rav Shimon Bar Yochai, as you know, is buried in Meron. 
So if we take the letters of Meron and we teach in the yeshivas in Shechem, Yericho and Hebron, all together the first letters spell Shia. And, uh, and that's what we're trying to all do, whether it's in Israel or, or anywhere around the world. And in addition, we also have a very large yeshiva, what we call the yeshiva without walls. It's the internet site. I mean, if you don't have an internet site, you're nobody these days. And uh, we have, on all kidding aside, with 320,000 hits last month, Baruch Hashem, all over the world. You should see the letters that people send from the craziest place. I don't even know these places existed. And people, to some of these people, it's their only connection to Yiddishkeit. And the outpouring and, and the shaila, the questions that they ask from Ginsburg, and the assistance that they ask. And each and every person who writes gets a letter back. And uh, you can see after the lecture, we have a computer set up outside. You can search the internet on our site and see what it's all about. It's very exciting. There's more information in your packets. Um, in addition, we have an interesting program called Eshel Abraham, which is a planting of trees throughout the settlements and the Golan Heights. Again, for those interested in doing this, you have to do it quick, because next year in Israel is the sabbatical year. Everybody takes off. The whole country just stops. And we all go to sleep for a year. And nobody plants, and nobody works the ground. It's a Sabbath for the whole year. And uh, many, many communities in Israel may not even realize the difference between the next year and this year. But on the ground, there's no work in the ground, no planting, no, just watering. Maintaining is permitted, but nothing new. So therefore, we're trying to plant a lot of trees as soon as possible. And each person that participates in this program receives a beautiful certificate, and I haven't yet done this is a copy of the certificate. This is to certify that Galinai Institute has purchased five fruit trees, which was planted by Eshel Abraham, that's the name of the organization, in honor of Chabad of Illinois. And uh, this is suitable for framing, and uh, afterwards, we're going to throw a musket and put it up in Baruch Hashem's wonderful program. Uh, in closing, Galinai is an international organization. We have books and we have tapes and, and Torah as far as we can possibly teach. But it's, it would be nothing without, of course, the leadership of Rabbi Yitzchak Ginsburg, who, based in Kfar Chabad, his teachings literally reached the entire world. And it's therefore a pleasure and a privilege to introduce tonight Rabbi Yitzchak Ginsburg.
Neurofibromatosis, or NF, is a genetic disorder that causes tumors to grow anywhere on or in the body. It can lead to blindness, deafness, loss of limbs, brain tumors, and severe disfigurement. Neurofibromatosis. Let me make it easy for you. Children's Tumor Foundation. The Children's Tumor Foundation, dedicated to ending neurofibromatosis through research. Let's all start saying it. Children's Tumor Foundation. I'm Rabbi Shmuley Boteach, and you're watching Taped with Rabbi Doug. Shalom, we're here at Tate with Rabbi Doug. I'm here with Rabbi Yitzhak Ginsburg. He is the uh, Hasidic Kabbalist that has been our guest. And uh, Rabbi Ginsburg, I want to welcome you to the show. So many things that you've said tonight are, are so interesting. I, I want to find out a little bit about you. First of all, you live in Israel, yet you don't seem to have an Israeli accent. Where, did you, where were you born? Where did you grow up? I was born in the same place in School here in Chicago. You were here in Chicago, most of the Chicago. Very nice, very nice. So you, you went to the University of Chicago. You're uh, very well uh, learned in, in not only uh, secular education, but uh, you know the Jewish studies, the, the Torah studies, the rabbinics, the Hasidis, the uh, uh, Kabbalah. Uh, what would you say that someone who is a, a Kabbalist per se, someone who is an expert in Kabbalah, how many years of study into Kabbalah would it take for someone to really become uh, a lecturer or, or someone who really knows Kabbalah as you do? 
and so on and so on. And it's referring to the deep sense of emotional love. To explain the, the concept in Kabbalah, using a physical image, is what happens is the style of the classic Kabbalah statements. Whereas the very same thing in Hasidic design, in Hasidic Hasid, is understood to refer to the deep emotions of the soul, which is much easier actually to relate to. Chesed is not to don't think of it as right hand, think of it as love. Well. This is the case where each one of the answers is to the love. And the strength of the love is a belief in the customer to respect spiritually or psychologically. Um, my, my biggest question for you now is, is there anybody who our viewers or maybe uh, prominent people in the Jewish community who know Jews around the world would would recognize as your personal students that you talk about too? Okay, all right, all right. I, I'm just curious. I, I want to tell our viewers that uh, if you're interested in more information not only about Rabbi Ginsburg but about Kabbalah itself and about your teachings, I, I know you're an author of so many books and uh, there are so many uh, tapes of your lectures that are available. Um, this is uh, available on the internet at uh, the website www.inner.org. And uh, you can email Rabbi Ginsburg or his organization at inner at inner.org, I-N-N-E-R at I-N-N-E-R dot O-R-G uh, for more information. Um, I know you are uh, certainly uh, busy this week, you're traveling all over the United States, one lecture after another, day by day, and uh, I know you're returning to Israel in not too long, and I just want to wish you much success, not only in your teachings, but uh, in, in your spreading the word, and uh, it should only, as, as we would say, uh, bring closer uh, Mashiach and, and the Geula Shleim of Yemei Rabbi Yamenu soon in our days. And uh, thank you so much for being on the show. And Hatzalcha Rabbah, wish you much success. And uh, thanks for being with us here on Tape of Rabbi Doug. Remember, we're on every week at this time, and we hope to see you next time. Shalom.